Hello everyone, my name is Rose. I'm a librarian here at the New Haven Free Public Library. Uh, today we're going to be making little teddy bears. If you, we're gonna be watching a video on Creative Bug which shows us uh, the instructions on how to do it. If you've picked up our take and make kits, then it has all the pieces you need for it. So I'm gonna pull out all the pieces in here so we can review what we need for the people who have it. So start with, you're gonna see there's a bag of stuffing. There's You know what, Rose? I'm having those. Yep. I'm having trouble um, making this Facebook Live. I don't have the button. Do you see the button there? Let's see, where would that be? It should be under share screen or advanced sharing options. Let me see. No, I'm not seeing it. Let me go to more. Zoom recording. All right, go ahead. All right, starting over. So hi, everyone. <laughs> my name is Rose. I'm a librarian at the New Haven Free Book Public Library. I'm joined by my friend Colleen, who is also a librarian at the New Haven Free Public Library. And today we're going to be making teddy bears. We've got a little hand sew little felt teddy bears. Uh, we're going to be watching a video on Creative Bug, which is a database of um, craft videos, craft instruction videos. Um, I'm going to show you how to get to that. But also, if you got our take and make kits, then you've got all the supplies you need to make this. So I'm going to go over what's in here real quick so we can see what we need. So we've got, we've got instructions, which still tells you what's in here, how to get to the Creative Bug video, and other projects you can do that are on Creative Bug. And it's free with your library card. We uh, featured it last month as um, part of our digital toolbox we're doing, and it's absolutely great. You just you can't go to creativebug.com or .org. You have to go That's through the library, but it'll say that on the just so yep. you know it'll it'll this tell has you how the, to get there. This has the link to go to to sign up with your library card. Oh, we got another person. Yep. So next, we've also got some templates here for clothing. You can make a dress or overalls for your little teddy bear if you want a boy bear or a girl bear mm -hmm. or a non-binary bear. <laughs> We've also got, this is instructions from a website called Howtoons on how to make simple um, stuffed animals. It's really easy to follow. And then we've got our teddy bear pieces. We've got the back piece with the ears and the front piece with no ears. We've got one big place piece of plain felt you can use to make your clothing and a smaller piece of plain felt you can use to do pockets or other details on your clothing. And we've got stuffing. And in this bag, we've got a few things. This has little pieces for the inside of the ears, little round shapes. And it's got a card with a sewing needle tape to it. Be careful, it's sharp. And embroidery floss, which we're gonna be using to sew. I was wondering how we were gonna package the needles. That was a creative way to do that. Tape it so no one get hurt, gets yeah. hurt or it falls out. <laughs> so you see there's a few different colors of floss in here. There's one dark color, a black or a dark brown you can use to sew on face and then a few different colors to match the different pieces of felt. So for this, since I had yellow felt for the clothing, I've got yellow embroidery floss. I've got a light brown bear, so I've got light brown floss, and then a darker brown floss to go with the smaller piece of felt. So the colors of felt and the colors of embroidery floss will be different for every kit. So anyone have any questions about what's in their kit? Nope, okay. So I will set that aside. So now I'm gonna show you how to get to Creative Bug. I'm gonna share my screen so you can see how I'm getting to that. So let's go. And this is for if you need to access the videos afterwards, if you don't, if we don't get to the whole thing, et cetera. But we're gonna share the videos live uh, as we do this. So you don't actually need to get there right now, but it's helpful to learn how to get there so you can watch these videos. Okay, since you're the host now, I'm not allowed to share my screen. So can you make me host again? Oh no, let me make myself not the host. <laughs> Let's 
see. Host me. I've squared make host. There we go. You want to change the host to I's? Yes. Okay. Here we are. So everyone, can everyone see the New Haven Free Public Library homepage? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we are here on the New Haven Free Public Library homepage. To get to Creative Bug, you go to Collections, go to Electronic Resources, and then right here, Creative Bug. So this is where you can sign up to Creative Bug. This will have this part here. We'll have um, a little sign-in uh, dialog box, which basically you just need the email address. So then can go to creativebug.com. To find this teddy bear video, you can just go to the search bar and type in teddy bear. And this is it. How to hand sew a teddy bear. And it's so ever, cute. <laughs> yeah, it's adorable. <laughs> and this shows, it's going to be a series of little videos. It gives you materials that everything you need. Oh, speaking of which, um, you will need a pair of scissors to make this. So let's give everyone a second to grab a pair, pair, pair of scissors so you can follow along. This also has a gallery of teddy bears. And this also includes patterns for bunnies. I cut out the teddy bears, but if you want to make bunnies, under materials, you can download the pattern. It has the bunny. You can cut that out of felt and make it at home. And you can make all your different clothes. If you have other things you want to put, like um, yarn or ribbons or pom-poms. You can decorate your animals with that. And you can also, if you're a member of, if you sign in and make yourself a member of Creative Bug, you can upload your final craft um, as part of like their social aspect. And so you can show off what you made. Show everyone else the cute little teddy bear you made. <laughs> All right. Do we have any more questions before we get started? I think we're good. Okay. So let us start from the beginning. Can everyone hear the video? And I have a company called Kita Golda, and we make things out of wool felt primarily, and we use a lot of hand stitching. I sell my things in boutiques around the country, and I've been that freeze. featured on Charlotte Design Sponge, One Kings Lane, and many others. Today we're going to make a little teddy bear. This is an heirloom piece, one of my best items. It's very simple to make. We're going to be using four different stitches. We're using the blanket stitch, the whip stitch, the running stitch, and the satin stitch. And we'll be using this beautiful wool felt. This is the kind of thing that everybody should have, kids and adults. Everyone needs a little stuffed companion. It's the kind of thing you can stick in your bag and bring along with you. And on your bed at night. Here are the tools and materials you'll need to make your stuffed companion. We have wool felt, brown is 12 by 11, the off-white is 12 by 6, the red is 2 by 3, and then you need a scrap of brown. I love working with wool felt. It feels wonderful in your hands. It doesn't fray. It doesn't have a grain direction. It's very forgiving. It's my favorite fabric to work with. I have kits available for this project. You can also find wool felt anywhere, and you can also use a recycled sweater, as long as it's felted and it won't fray when you cut it. Mm. Then we have stuffing. I have recycled polyfiber fill here. You can use cotton, bamboo, wool, whatever you prefer. Then you have your downloadable templates. Tracing paper. Needles. I like to use five sharps because they have a long eye and a sharp point. They're easy to fit. Pins. Embroidery floss. In this project, we're going to be using brown, light brown, off white, and red. We'll begin by cutting out our felt pieces. I've copied my templates onto cardstock and then I cut them out. And now I'm going to use my templates to cut out the felt pieces. 
Before I begin cutting, I want to lay out my template pieces to make sure that they're going to fit on the felt. And I'm using my felt wisely. I've positioned the piece I'm going to cut, which is the front of the bear, on the piece of felt. I'm going to pin my bear piece onto the wool felt. I don't often use pins for smaller pieces. But when I'm cutting out a piece of this size, I like to pin my template to my felt piece. Hey, Rose. Yep. For the next video, just so it doesn't like go slow in case it's going slow for people, it's like interrupting for me. Is there a way we could pause it for like five seconds, load it, and then sort of follow behind it? So maybe it won't um, okay. go pause slow. Okay, for a sec. Is that a moment to load? Yeah, that like little gray bar. Sometimes that helps me. So just want to make sure she's not cutting in and out. Okay. Let me know if that gets any better. Oh, so might just be my internet. <laughs> For everyone who made the kits at home, I already trimmed them for you. Rose, I think the sound got turned off. That's strange. Yeah. All right, let me see. Yeah, I'm not hearing it. I'm not sure. Is it the computer, maybe? I didn't do anything different. I literally did not press any buttons. That's so Let's weird. See. Do you want to start reloading the video and see if it kicks in? All right. Looks like a box that said share computer sound got unchecked for some reason. So oh. let me see if it comes works now. <laughs> I'm glad we figured it out. The muscle memory I get from drawing really helps me with my stitching. Can you hear it now? Yep. Use a pencil. Okay, good. And some tracing paper. Trace his head out a little bit. Now this is just to help me think about the placement. So I have the eyes here. They're fairly wide set apart. They're about exactly in the center of the head shape. The nose a bit lower than the base of the eye. But the face here, you can make your own face if you want to make it look a little bit different. In the you center. Want bigger eyes or closer the mouth. together or wider mouth, whatever you want it. Off from the nose, but not as far out to the eyes. Of course, you can put any face on your bear. I'm fond of the wide set eyes and I'm fond of not the big smile, just the subtle happiness smile. Now that I've practiced drawing those details, I'm going to keep my template close by so I can refer to it as I'm stitching these details. I'm working with three ply embroidery floss. 
it comes six ply, so I separate it into three ply, and I have an 18 inch piece of thread. I do not like to work with a longer piece of thread than that because it tangles up easily. I can always add more thread when I need it. I'm going to tie a knot, bottom of my thread, one. I'm going to pause there because it looks like she doesn't show you how to separate the embroidery floss. So I'm going to, can everyone see me? I'm going to pull out a piece of embroidery floss and show you how to separate it. So as she says, there's six strands here. So I'm going to find, let's pause screen sharing so you can see me a little better. Let's see, how do I... Pause share, there we go. So can you see me bigger? Not yet. I can see what I can do. Oh, maybe I paused sh sharing on Facebook Live. So let me resume that. Hmm. Resume share. Let's see. You're trying to unshare your screen? Yeah, so just so you can see through my camera. Maybe go to participants and then there's like the little dot that says screen sharing and maybe click that. I'm not sure. Stop that. No. Do you want to make me the host? Then that'll stop sharing the screen for now. Yeah, but then it'll stop sharing to Facebook too. All right. Oh, all together. Yeah, you're right. Well, I can see you if you want to just hold your hands up. All right. So holding it's close. So we've got six strands here. I've got three and three. Pull them off to the sides, hold them separate, and then run your finger down carefully. It's going to twist. So you go slow, press gently so it doesn't get all tangled like that tried to do. And then just run your fingers down it to help those strands get together. So now we've got three strands and three other st strands, which is what she's using in this video to sew with. So I'm going to resume now. Two, the goal here is to get the two knots to land on top of each other. And that looks sufficient. Now remember I said wide set and midway down from the top of the head. So about there, I'm just stitching the top layer. So I'm going to outline a little circle with stitches to make my shape. And then I'm going to fill in with the satin stitch. The satin stitch is just stacking the stitches one right next to the other and filling in the space. And now I'm just going to move my thread over to the other eye space. So there'll be a long thread carried on the back. Do you want to pause it and give people time to do this? Guide. She's going a little fast. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I want to make sure you guys can all hit, do a thumbs up when you're done with that, that first eye or we can wait until you're done with both. She's a pro though. She went very yeah. fast. <laughs> she did go very fast. Yeah. There's my little bear, how his face came out. Yeah, he looks just like it. Like you did a good job. I did try to go pretty close. I think yeah. my eyes are slightly closer set together. But pretty similar. That seems like an easy stitch, the satin stitch. You're just yep. going like you're just filling it in, yeah. Back and forth, just close together. Yeah. Like a little circle and then fill it in. I'll play a little bit more just so she does the second eye. Yep. Yeah. As for placement. I'm thinking about how far I am from this edge. It should be similar to that edge. It's really difficult to make things symmetrical. 
So it seems like it should be simple, but it's not. Okay, I'm outlining the eye. And remember, if it's not perfect, that's just character. Because mine's not going to be perfect. Now, when I'm looking to make the second eye, I'm not looking at the template. I'm looking at the first eye that I created. Okay, now I'm doing the satin stitch and filling in this space. Outline that a little bit better. And that eye looks a little bit smaller to me. So I'm going to make another little line out here. Okay. I'm sad. So I'm going to pause that so people have a chance to sew their eyes. And then in a couple minutes, we'll move on to showing the nose. Colleen, you're muted. <laughs> I did that on purpose and I forgot. Um, we've got some comments on Facebook from Julie Hunter, who is an Hi. old friend of ours. And Hi, Julie. We're, excited, we're excited to see you, Julie, even though we can't physically see you. We're glad you found us. And um, you're gonna have to share uh, a picture on our Facebook of your bear when you're done. We wanna see it. <laughs> so these bears, the, the pieces in the kit, I cut them with a cricket machine, which Julie is very familiar with. Oh yeah, she's a pro. <laughs> yeah. So a Cricut is a uh, machine that you can use to cut out different materials, paper, fabric, um, chipboard, leather, that sort of thing. So I used it to cut out this material so we had them all the same to make sure that the front and the back pieces would match. Which also saves my hands because cutting 20 kits all by hand would <laughs> hurt my hands. So we have a question in the chat. Do you tie off the thread after stitching the eyes before going to the nose? Is that something you did in the last one? I think she's going to just jump right over. When she gets to tying it off, she'll show you how to do it. But if you run out, if your thread happens to reach the end before she does, um, she'll show you how to knot it. <laughs> I could explain yeah. it, but it's better to see it, I think. Yeah. Let us know in the chat or just do a, hand, a thumbs up whenever you guys are done with the eyes. I'm looking forward to seeing what everyone's bears look like. I bet they're all going to be adorable. I bet they're all going to be different. Like, I think yeah. everyone's got their own style. It's going to be fun. Yep, every person is a bit different, so every bear mm -hmm. is going to be different. Yeah. The material looks nice. The felt, I've never really, I don't sew very much, but it looks like nice material to have like as a bear. Yep. Just a little bit fuzzy, a little bit stiff, so it's easy to like mm -hmm. hold instead of like yeah. some materials are kind of slippery or thin or they fray. Felt doesn't yeah. do that. I like that she said you can use an old sweater. So if you want to make more of these and you don't, you run out of the take and make stuff, uh, sounds like you can just reuse a pattern sweater even and make like a pattern bear or something. I'll have to look at my old sweaters. <laughs> sweaters, um, they're kind of a knit material, so they can fray, but if it's a actual wool sweater, you can felt it, which felt is just wool that it's kind of, if you rub it together enough, then it just sticks together. That's called felting. Flatter. So a, Interesting. a regular wool sweater, if you if you wash it in the washing machine, it gets wet and it rubs it all together and it felts it. That's really cool. I didn't know that. A sweatshirt probably would not fray, and that would be even softer mm -hmm. than felt. So if you had an old sweatshirt or an old t-shirt, you could use that. Yeah. This is a great gift to make, too, and I know we're coming into, no one's ready for fall, but we're coming into fall when all the holidays are coming up. <laughs> or also, a single sheet of felt at a craft store is like less than 50 cents. Yeah. <laughs> And if you live, in, if you live in the area, we have art and supply and halls, uh, both downtown. Yep. Or there's always the big craft stores, Joann's and Michael's, which are nearby. 
and they sell in bulk. So if you want to make a million teddy bears, definitely go there. <laughs> if you go to Joanne's, you could also get a yard of felt and just make <laughs> tons of them. Just make tons of them. Actually, I don't know if there are any fabric stores in New Haven. I should look that up sometime. Yeah, that would be cool. They would have a lot of, um, a lot more different fabrics. I know uh, EBM Vintage. Have you ever heard of that antique store? It's a little, it's kind of close to the library. It's by the Dunkin' Donuts, but they have a good amount of fabric if you ever go check it out. It's vintage fabric and it's pretty cheap. Good to know. Yeah. Want me to play some music while everybody is making their teddy bears? You guys can just nod if you're interested. <laughs> Let me find a find a YouTube. No. <laughs> okay. We'll keep it quiet. <laughs> Could have found some cute teddy bear songs. I'm sure there's some somewhere. I know. Yeah, some songs about teddy bears. <laughs> Good to see you've got a couple kids sewing. Yeah, that's what I wish I had learned when I was younger. I'm sure it sticks with you. So if we're just about done with the eyes, I think we can probably move on to the nose because it's very similar. Um, and then we'll give you guys time to do that too. Sound good to everyone? Everyone ready, ready to move on? Okay. That aside. Now I'm going to go, and there's the long thread between the two eyes. Now I'm going to make my nose centered just below the eyes. Again, using my thumb as a guide. I'm using the running stitch to create this little space that I'm going to fill in. Look at my template. The nose on my template is significantly larger. Make, I'm going to make this one a little bigger. Rose, can you use fleece? We had a question in the chat. Fleece, yeah, that should work. That won't fray either. It's going to be a thicker material. Okay. Wait, okay. flannel. I'm going to tie off either my thread on the back. Fleece is thicker, flannel is thinner, neither one will not it. Both are going to be pretty soft. Awesome. I've challenged myself a little here because my thread is quite short, but I can do it. She's kind of making a loop, pulling the end through the loop, and then pulling it tight. as close as possible to the felt. One. And we're going to do one more knot to try to land it right on top. That's a little lesson that I should have knotted off when my thread was a little bit longer. So now we need to add another piece of thread to do the mouth. Starting with an 18 inch piece of embroidery floss. It's six ply. Now she you can goes see over that I'm separating it. this in the middle of the piece of thread. Don't start at one end. Start in the center. If you start at one end, you'll create a big knotty mess and pull gently. <laughs> Even pros run out of string. <laughs> mm -hmm. With three ply. And I picked sewing needles that I'm had a big eye, so they should be relatively easy to thread. That's always the hardest for me, <laughs> threading that needle. Two, making sure the knots fall right on top of each other. It's hard to get the knots to fall on top of each other, so okay. if they don't, don't worry too much. <laughs> Looking at my template, for placement of the mouth. Coming in from the back side, in the center of the bottom of the nose, I'm going to go off to one side with the running stitch. Just going in and out through one layer. And now I'm going to fill in those spaces. I'm going to go 
in right in the same hole. And then I'm going to come out. Here's where my thumb is really helpful. Out. And then back to the back side. I'm going to try to repeat that on the other side. Looking at my template. And I can see a little place when I'm looking at my bear. I can see a little empty space here. I'm going to fill that in with a stitch. Hmm. I'm pretty satisfied with that face. Now I'm going to tie a knot on the back. It's much easier with a longer thread. <laughs> One. I'm using my thumb to push the knot as close to the felt as possible. Two. And cut that off. Now we're going to switch thread colors to the light. So now I'm going to pause there so people have time to finish their faces. How's everyone doing? I was thinking of putting a poll in, but I think only the host can do that. Is there a way you could do a poll and ask um, whether people are almost done or done or need more time? I think it's in the chat. There should be a poll option. All right, Holly says she just finished the mouth. Okay. It says I'm logged in from another device, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can just say, Put in the chat where you're at, and we'll try to come to a consensus of whether we should keep going or not. So we've got Holly. I don't know about Kate or Teddy's computer. If you guys are still working on the mouth, that's OK. Just let us know when you're done. So we've learned two stitches so far. We learned the satin stitch and the running stitch. Mm -hmm. Running stitch is just a simple in and out and in and out, which you can kind of see on the edge of the ear. It's just so in that's and out. the main one. Yep, Finally, running stitch. Yeah. And later we're going to do the blanket stitch, which is this one around the edge, which oh. she'll show you. It's kind of hard to see on this because the um, color thread I use is pretty similar to this color of the um, uh, felt. But it's kind of wraps around the edge and also has a line going along the edge. So it's a little bit decorative. Yeah, it's pretty when you can see the stitches. I like that. Yep. Kate says she's currently on the nose about halfway. So we're okay. going to give them a little more time. I'll find something to play in the meantime. I'll find some music. Not about bears. I'll find something nice to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you're going to have to, I think, because you have to put it on your screen. But let me try and see if everyone can hear it. Let's do that. Yep. All right. YouTube. You know what? I can do it on my phone. That's easier. Is that something you can hear? Yeah, I can hear it. It's a little bit tinny, though. Um, let me try on the computer. Any requests, Rose? Well, let's see. Kate says we can move on. How about yeah. Teddy? Yeah, let's check in on Teddy. How are you guys doing? What part are you on? Okay, I'll give you a couple of minutes then. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. I'll play a nice instrument. Can 
guys hear that? No, I can't. Um, all right, I think we're gonna have to give up on music. <laughs> all right. I could sing. I know, right? Let's just do some kind of <laughs> entertaining thing. I'll check to see how many people we have joining us on Facebook, though. All right. Hello, hello to all our friends who are joining us on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Looks like we had 25 engagements. We have 112 people reach, 11 comments. And how many people watching us now? We got two watching us live now. All right. So hello. <laughs> and Julie wants to know, are we going to do more art classes? So coming up, we do have teacup candle making and cyanotype making. And then there was another one we had. Let's see, after cyanotypes is soap making. The soap making and then eventually we have like a cat that we're making and a couple different oh, yeah. animals yeah that one's gonna cross be stitch cool. yes cross stitch. Gonna be doing cross stitch cards we've got some little animal cards that look they're pre-punched with little holes so you can cross stitch little sweaters on them so if you've never done cross stitch before it's a great place to start it's really easy they came out really cool so i'm excited for Cute. that one <laughs> all right i think we're probably good to move on all right so we will resume. Lighter brown, we're also only using two ply. So we did the facial features with three ply. We're going to stitch the rest of the bear with two ply. I already have one threaded. I'm going to place my ears on the back side. There's no right or wrong way, but I like the way that looks. And this, this part is going to be covered. I'm going to attach them with a running stitch first. I'm going to tie a knot in my thread. One, two. I'm going to go three times around since I'm using two-ply thread here, thinner thread. Oh, I see a question. Will there be take and make kits for the teacup candles? Yes, there will. I'm going to start on the inside because that's going to be covered. So the by teacup the candles are going to be next week's take and make kit. Just doing a running stitch, traveling around the perimeter of the dark piece of felt. Going through two layers through the dark brown, through the light brown, back up through the light brown to the dark brown. I would say you can probably make these wider because it's just such a little piece. Um, you can do less, less shorter stitches. Yep. I'm gonna tie a knot using my thumb Push it as close to the felt as possible. One and two and three. Snip that off and repeat the same thing on the second side. Tie it off. Three. And then she kind of skipped ahead, so I'm going to pause a moment, give the people time to sew, to sew on their ears. This is actually a good time to mention um, where can you sign up, uh, Julie wants to know, for the next um, take and make. So just in case you forget, um, the way we do take and makes is you call Rose. Yep. <laughs> and call you... the library. Mm -hmm. So that's don't remember. Don't haven't memorized the library's number off the top of my head, but go to our oh, website. I do now. Finally, <laughs> um, 203-946-8130 and you call extension 140 and I'll put that in the chat. <laughs> yep. So call that number. It'll reach me 
and then I can uh, make an appointment for you. So for how we're doing the take and date kits, works, the process works the same as for picking up books on hold. So you call us, make an appointment for a 10 minute window. Um, then you come to the library during that window, knock on the front door or go to, go to the front door and there'll be a number for you to call. And then the, there'll be someone waiting there to bring you out your kit. So for the take and make kits, since we have a limited number of them, we're allowing two kits per family. And some kits, like the teddy bear kits only made one bear each, but like the uh, candle, the beeswax candle kits from last week made three candles each. So depending on how many materials you have, each kit may make a different amount. I think the plan, unless I'm wrong, for the teacup candle making is one teacup that we provide. So you can clearly provide your own, um, but we will be having teacups. Also, is that correct? I think Celeste is also putting in, there's little tins that you can use to make their uh, oh, nice. candles as well. So one teacup, one tin, I think. That's awesome. So you walk away with two, with some swag. You got two yep. crafts. <laughs> and she's picking up the teacups literally from like Goodwill or a dollar store or something. So <laughs> you're going to get some cool patterns that way, I think. <laughs> I think everyone's going to be a little bit different. Yeah, that'll be fun. I was looking up the pictures to do the social media for the teacup candle making, and there were so many different cool looking ones on Etsy and stuff. So it's a good, you don't have to buy them. You can make them yourself. Mm -hmm. All right. So our previous, the beeswax candles was literally a sheet of beeswax and you rolled it up. Whereas the teacup candles is going to be a block of wax chopped up that you have to melt. Yeah, it's a totally different process. It's a little more involved, but it comes out really cool. Not sure if people will be able to have the melted wax in front of them since that kind of needs to be melted on a stove. So it might well, be it's good we record this yep. so they can always go back. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Got a couple more friends joining us now. Oh, nice. All right, has everyone had a chance to sew on their ears? Okay, looks like we're good. Almost? I would give it another minute. It looks like there's two two people yeah, yeah. saying no. Okay, all right then. I'm glad you cut all this out uh, ahead of time. That would have taken up a lot of time too, trying to get it all perfect. <laughs> Yeah, the only reason I didn't cut out the clothes is because you have two options. You could make a boy bear, you could make a girl bear, or a overalls bear and a dress bear. So I'm like, those are pretty. Get... Those are yeah. pretty standard looking versus the ears. I feel like I would have trouble with the ears. <laughs> this guy's just fun to pet. <laughs> fidget bear. I like that uh, she put a name on one of them. Mm -hmm. I used to name all my stuffed animals, so that's yeah, fun. It looks like a little addition. Was running stitch. Well, it looks like it was the back stitch, which is basically a running stitch, and then you just go back and fill in all the spaces. Yes. But she, yeah. We will get to that later in the videos. There's a video on how to decorate them, how to make the clothes. So speaking of felt, um, I know there's other things you can do with felt. There's like little figurines you can make. How do you do that with felt? Um, well, actually in the instructions I've, did I do put the ones on finger puppets? Let's see. Yeah. In the instructions here, there's a video for animal finger puppets, which shows you how to It's kind of make a little sleeve and then decorate it. That's awesome. Yeah, so keep your instructions. There's lots of good stuff in there. Or if you just go to Creative Bug and search sewing yeah. or felts or felt. animals. <laughs> yep. There's Lots so much on there. And they've got, besides little stuffed animals, they've got instructions for clothing, they've got quilting, they've got a whole bunch of little sewing projects. And art, painting, they've painting. got all different stuff, yeah. And holiday theme is really fun. Like we've been looking at stuff to do for Halloween. And I found Christmas crafts, and I was just like, oh, I can't wait. 
They used to have a whole bunch of like easy felt animal masks, but it looks like they took most of them down recently. Hmm. Which is weird. Yeah. I like that they come up with new content so often. Mm -hmm. They come up with new crafts and videos every month and they roll them out and it's great. All right, Holly has one more ear left. Angela, hi. Thanks for joining us. I see someone's playing with stuffing. <laughs> it's what, and squishy. The, what was the stuffing made out of that you provided? Uh, it's a brand called Polyfill. It's a pretty like standard. Let's see this. Kind of fluffy yeah, stuff. That looks good. There's several similar brands of fiber fill. It's basically I'm sure there's a lot of fills you can use. Yeah. You're done? How's everyone else doing? Everyone else done with the ears? If everyone else is good, then we can get going. Well, it looks like maybe not quite. Sorry, I was muted. Holly's good. So it looks like we could probably move on just to the next step and then give some people time. All right. Comes together with the blanket stitch, which is a very simple stitch and gives a nice clean edge. I'm using my light brown two ply thread. I am not tying a knot on my thread. Starting under the arm, going through the front layer. I'm going to sandwich this piece of thread between the two layers, leave a nice little tail, and I'm going to wrap around the edge into the back side, try to come out in the same hole or right next to the same hole. Don't pull all the way, keep a little loop, go through the loop. I'm going to do the exact same thing again in the exact same place. This will serve as a knot. Give a little tug and into the back side, up through the front side, save a little loop there, go through the loop, pull snugly. Do not pull too tight, you will break your thread. And now we're going to move along the perimeter of the bear. Back side to the front side, wrap my thread, and pull. Back side to the front side, wrap my thread, and pull. Here's the nice clean line along the edge, connecting the back and the front together. I tend to wrap my thread in this style when I have a long thread. And when my thread gets short, then I tend to go through the loop. It's the exact same thing. My thread is getting a little short, so I'm going to do one more stitch, and then I'm going to add a new piece of thread. I'm going to pull off two plies from this piece, again starting near the middle and gently pulling them apart. So can we pause and go over that one more time? The previous thread. Do you want to back up? Show no, again. you can just pause it and um, just reiterate. So you're not tying a knot. The way you're adding the new string on is you're going through the stitch. Is that correct? I. Well, she's about to say she might be tying them together. Let me see. Oh, OK. And the new thread, I'm going to tie a knot. Mm -hmm. I want that knot to fall as close to my last stitch as possible. So this looks like a square knot, similar to when you start sh tying your shoe. Holding shoe. it with my finger. So that first, One, just wrapping around two, each other, and then wrapping around two. again. And just make it and the knot end up close to the felt. So you're tying the old string to the new string, is that it? Yep. OK, to make a continuous string. Okay. I don't cut them too short. I'm just going to throw, stick them back inside there. 
There's a reason I like to keep those threads long because sometimes if they start popping up to the outside of my work, I can pull them back in from the inside. Continuing blanket stitch. Oh, Angela needs the instructions. Rose, is there a way you could pull up the instructions and add them as a file to the chat? Um, here, let me see if I can go over to, can I go to another window or am I stuck in the screen sharing? I can do it. I can I go into Creative Bug you. and download the yeah. PDF. Okay. Mm -hmm. Trying to keep my stitches evenly spaced from one another and going into the same depth of the felt. When we get to the ear piece here, we're going to do a little bit of a modified blanket stitch. We're going to grab a little bit of the back, come up through the front, wrap a thread around. Grab a little bit of the back, come up through the light brown, wrap my thread, My intention is to go through both layers, come up through the brown, wrap my thread. You can see that I'm creating that same line that I was creating on the seam right here. Grab a little bit of the back, come up through the front, wrap my thread, pull tightly. Grab a little bit of the back, Come up through the light brown, wrap my thread, pull tightly. Now I'm back to the regular blanket stitch. If I didn't modify my blanket stitch there, I'd end up folding up his ear into my stitches. I need to change my thread again, add another piece, trying to get that knot to land as close to my last stitch as possible. One and two. If I tug on these threads, I can get the knot a little closer. And now three. I'm going to trim that extra long one. Colleen, if you could put and a link to the Creative Bug video, inside. like the web page with the lesson, that may be and helpful too. Thread my long piece. And we're about to do that modified blanket stitch on the second side. Pull my thread a little bit. I can see the knot popping out. That's why I like that longer tail. Grab a little of the back side, come up through the front, wrap my thread. Grab a little of the back side, come up through the front, wrap my thread. I want to show you on the back what it looks like. These little stitches are just grabbing the back side. We're going to continue blanket stitching until we're two inches from where we started, and then we're going to stuff our bear. So I think it'll take. I like a densely yep, stuffed. Pausing that there. So I think it would take a rather long time for people to sew all the way around. So would people be all right with us just moving on so we can show you how to stuff it? I like that. Okay. So and you keep sewing. It's recorded in, in, a, in a couple days. We'll, we'll have this up, but these videos are available on Creative Bug. And I just reminded in the chat how you access it and you just make an account and then click that link and everything you need is there. So if you're not on our steps yet, need a little more time and want to do it on your own, that's where you find everything. Okay, so moving on to the stuffing part. Stuffed bear. So I like this recycled polyfiber fill to use for my stuffing. It has a nice springy quality to it, but you can use what you'd like. When I'm stuffing the bear, I like to use smaller pieces and make these little balls. And I'm going to start pushing it up into the head area. That's where I have my pencil eraser. Helps me push the stuffing around inside. 
Fill it up. Push it up with the pencil. I'm use my thumb. When I go into the hand, smaller little ball, I'll place it in there with my finger, and then I'll use my pencil eraser and push it in even further. Depending on the amount that you have and that you use, you can make your bear super fat if you want to, so it has a big stomach, or you can make it super small. leg. <laughs> I put as much eraser. as I can fit in here, so. Yeah, there you go. Further. I think it'll come out about as stuffed Don't as mine is, side. which I think use is good. The eraser. Yeah. If you want it more stuff, you can get this bits, at craft not stores. A big giant. Piece. Or use cotton balls. <laughs> yeah, it looks like yours looks exactly like it. So it looks like you provided just enough to make it look like this one. Yep. Some people might like it more stuff. Some like the, my, some might like it less. I'd probably put more in the stomach and less in the head. <laughs> make it like Winnie the Pooh. You can also make them bean bags. They fill it with oh. rice or beans, or they sell little plastic pellets you can use to make a bean bag. One more arm to stuff. Rice is a great idea. Like to make sure I have a little extra stuffing in the neck area so he doesn't have a floppy head. It's a good point. <laughs> Give him a little squeeze to make sure he feels nice and dense, and then I'm ready to stitch him up. I'm using the tail of thread where I left off this two inch gap. I'm using Looks my like finger. We have four people following now. My left hand. On okay. Mm -hmm. I'm closing Welcome. this gap to tuck the stuffing inside. And this, this is the blanket stitch? Yeah, this is the blanket stitch. I will mm -hmm. say be careful around the tightest edge. You can see there's the stuffing peeking out a little there. So the very tight corners, you might want to make the stitches a little bit closer so that it doesn't pull apart in the very tight corners. Mm. But on the inside of the leg there, the stuffing sticking My out. last stitch is going to be right next to the first stitch I made. Do a regular blanket stitch. I'm going to do it again in the same location. Again in the same location. I'm going to stick my needle inside and come out in another place. This is a fun trick for hiding the end of the thread inside the bear. Clip off my thread. I like that. And there's our little bear. bear. He's so clean. <laughs> Your bear could be done at this stage, but you may want to customize him with a little outfit. So would we like to go over how to do the outfits? It's a pretty similar process. Cut it out and then you just I think it's blanket stitch it onto the bear. Although she will be going over the, what was it? The back stitch to um, sew on the, what was it, the name she had on there. So yeah, let's keep going. Here I've chosen overalls with a little pocket to put on our bear. You could also, prior to assembling your bear, have embroidered a little heart on him. There's lots of options. This is a gender neutral outfit. You could do it in more boy colors. I also have a template for a little dress. We will start by attaching the pocket. I'm going to eyeball where I want the pocket to land on the front of the overalls. So I'm going to take one layer, front layer of the overalls and the pocket, and I'm going to stitch it with a contrasting color thread. 
I'm going to tie a knot. I'm using two ply thread, which is going to require me to make three little knots that are going to land on top of each other. And my thread is never longer than 18 inches. So I'm eyeballing where I want the pocket to land, holding it in place. The felt will naturally stick to each other. It's another nice quality of working with it, so it doesn't require a pin. I'm going to start in the corner. I'm going to do two stacking stitches like so. And I'm sure you can just do a running stitch for I'm this, running correct? A running stitch across the top of the pocket piece only. The stacking isn't necessary or is it? Do you know? I'm not sure. That might be as a way to lock it in. To make kind of like knot it sort of. Consistent. Okay. So see, she's Evenly running just spaced. along the top of just the pocket part. So that it's open, right? Yep, so it's open up top, but it still looks the same all the way around. I like that. Back into... I would definitely mess that up and do it on both pieces. Like the layers? <laughs> well, then it would be a patch instead of a pocket. And yes. I'm going to do stacking stitches on this side. Well, maybe having this two st stitches on the side is just for aesthetics? Seems like it, yeah. I don't want it to get too complicated for everybody. <laughs> I'm going to whip stitch the pocket perimeter. So whip stitch is like the blanket the stitch, overalls. except you're not wrapping it around the thread around the needle. Through two layers, coming out on the edge of the pocket, going in through two layers. Interesting. So that's a little technical. So you would think the blanket stitch, if everyone learned that, that would be okay? Or you could just do the running stitch, make it easy on yourself. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. Um, that learning learning a whip stitch other is stitch. kind of going around along the outside, whereas I'm working a little faster now. Out. I'm doing the same thing instead of just oh. going to the other side, coming out here on the edge. So this is up one layer, down, down through two. When I'm working faster, come up to this side, front side, dip to, through both layers, and then come out. So a good way to remember that would be like from the back, you're going through white, and then you're going through red and white. Then back through white, okay. over in red and white. Moving quicker. Or your colors that you have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to think what I would put in the pocket. Probably like change. <laughs> <Just> change. <laughs> Button, or a little, maybe. If you make this for like a Valentine's present, put a little chocolate in there. <laughs> oh, I like that. Now I'm going to tie it off on the back side. One. Two. We lost Angela, but she says thanks Friends. again. And I think okay. she was on her phone, I so I think she her. didn't, she wasn't actually doing it. I think she needs to come and back. So I'm glad we gave everyone on the way to access it. Here mm -hmm. first, then I'm going to do a side and another side, then one shoulder, then I'll slip the outfit onto my bear and do the last shoulder. I'm not going to tie a knot and I'm using two ply red thread. I'm going to go in between the two layers. leaving a tail, going around the edge. Through and again, the you're leaving that bottom open. On the front side? For the feet. <laughs> yep. And so we're going to do the inside of the legs, then the outside of the legs, but not the armholes. My tail on it. And That's I'm good. Do that breaks up the work a little bit. The same spot. You have to do the whole outside. Through the loop. I think the dress will and be easier because it's just up and down knot. sides. <laughs> and you could make a dress and overalls just for the same bear and then dress them. Well, so it's a little hard to get it on and off because she outfit. has to oh, sew it onto it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's about the clothes are not loose stitches. enough to fit on and off. 
Yeah, I got to go. Zini bear. Along the edge. <laughs> and dipping into the felt evenly with each stitch. And for my last stitch, I'm going to do what I did at the first stitch. One, two, just sticking my needle in and out so I can trim it. I'm going to trim that now as well and tuck it up inside. Now I'm going to work one of the sides between the two layers. Keep a tail, wrap around the edge, back into my felt, out the same hole, and through the loop. I want to show you, this is the point where the outfit dips in. This point right here is where I'm going to stop. If I didn't stop in this location, I wouldn't be able to put the arm through. This is the armhole. Two more stitches. And this last stitch, I'm going one and two. So I'll just do three there. Two or three are fine to do in that in these starting and ending locations. Thread through and snip. We're going to repeat this exactly on the other side. Let's tuck in these threads and then we're going to sew a shoulder seam. Trim these. What's cool about this is when you open this up in creative bug it tells you what skills you're going to you you're going to learn from the craft so if you find another craft and you're not sure if you know the stitches used there's a section you can click on that says skills used and learned in this so it'll tell you the tally of the different the stitches layers. you used and learned just from this lesson leave a tail wrap around the edge come out near or in the same hole and I think she's done four in this lesson, if that's correct. Gently. You repeat that again in the same location. And we'll do one blanket stitch. And then we'll tie off with this blanket stitch. Make a blanket stitch. Repeat it in the same location. Make my thread come out in a random place like that and clip and... I never knew that trick. That's a good way to hide the end of the string. Mm -hmm. Let's put our outfit on our bear. Barren overalls reminds me of the classic children's book corduroy. corduroy. Yeah. I wonder if you could use corduroy fabric for the outfit. Probably. Possibly. I'm not sure. If I that's... don't know where you would get it, but. <laughs> <laughs> fabric store. I guess, yeah. Or an old pair of corduroy pants and just cut it up. <laughs> if you got one, yeah. <laughs> and that one, so he spends the whole book looking for a button. So you can decorate strap. this with buttons. Exactly. I love that story. They made it into a movie, correct? Did they? I don't know. Wrap around. I think they did. No, I'm up. thinking of Paddington Bear. <laughs> <laughs> through the same hole or right next to the same hole. Through the loop. So I wouldn't be surprised if Weston Woods made a video of it. They do a lot of you animated videos of same location. Uh, picture books. That one is a classic. Yeah, totally. Make a regular I'm trying to think of other bears I like. I like Little Bear. That was mm -hmm. one of my favorites. <laughs> Be our final stitch, blanket stitch, and the Berenstein Bears. 
Mm -hmm. Another blanket stitch right over that blanket stitch. Bury your thread in there. Come out in a random location. Clip our threads. Here is your adorable overall little stuffed companion. Awesome. What a cool craft. This pocket is a perfect little place to put a love note, or you could use oh. this as a tooth fairy pillow. So and now she's showing how to decorate and that. The tooth fairy could leave a little note. I'm going to show you how to personalize your pocket. You could personalize your pocket with decorative stitches. We're going to work on a name. You want to stitch this name on or these decorative stitches on prior to attaching the pocket. Here I've written out a name on my paper template, which I'm going to attempt to stitch onto my felt piece. I still write out the name every time on the paper prior to stitching for spacing. We'll stitch in a two-ply thread in an off-white, which is a contrasting color to the red. And I'm not going to worry so much about the shape of my letters. I'm worrying more about the place that they're falling so that I have enough space to get all my letters nicely on this piece of felt. Before I start, I'll tie a knot. Ooh. I'm using the running stitch and I'm making a line that is not filled in when I start, but I'm going to go back in and fill in that line after I've completed the name. Not filling in my stitches allows me to rip things out if I am not happy with my placement. I'm just going to check in here. I should be, I'm on the middle letter and I want to fall about in the middle. This is a good way to save time because she's keeping it all one string instead of having to do each letter. Mm -hmm. I can see that I've come a little too close on the right side. So my solution here is I'm going to trim the left side, but I'm just going to trim it a bit because I need to leave enough room for the stitching of the pocket onto the overalls. Before I trim, I'm going to fill in the name. I'm going to start going backwards because I still have some thread here. So I'm starting at the end of the A where I just stopped stitching. So I'm coming up from the back and filling in my stitches. All right, so I think we're a little bit ahead of everybody, but as long as everybody knows how to access this, you can do this detailing on your own when you pick a fair name. And if you finish your craft, we would love you to put it on social media that you use right and just tag holes. the library. So I'll put the library tag. Show me your bear. <laughs> we want to see it. <laughs> that I drew and that. I think we can probably stop there. I know we went a little over. Yeah. So how's everyone doing? Everyone making progress on their bears? Seems like Teddy disappeared and Holly doesn't have her camera on, but let's see Kate. There you go. It'll look much uh, more real when it's stopped, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for coming to our program.